This week is International Dark Sky Week. So let's talk about city lighting and light pollution. Light pollution happens when an area is so saturated with light that it completely overwhelms the night sky. Now, nobody likes stumbling around in the dark, but there are certainly ways we can use light more efficiently. To celebrate International Dark Sky Week, let's think about how to use nighttime lighting more considerately, more intelligently, and more proficiently. The night sky is a resource. It is a thing of value, both in its beauty and as a reminder of our place in the universe. So exactly, what is light pollution? Let's take a look. If you haven't been outside for a while in a truly dark place, a place where there are no streetlights, buildings, headlights, or neon signs, you may not realize just what it is you are missing. But if you can get away from it all, to a place where it is truly dark, the sky is a vastly different place. There are thousands and thousands of stars that get washed away when the light we create is too bright. Also lost out there in the night sky are the ghostly, faint, deep sky objects like various nebulae and the clusters of stars that make up our galaxy. There are even completely different galaxies that can be seen with just a small telescope if the conditions are right. But they are so faint that they can easily get lost in the glow of a bright city. The biggest loss due to light pollution is our view of the Milky Way. One third of the people on Earth can't even see it because of all the light we produce. In fact, here in the United States, 80% of the people miss out on it completely. The Milky Way is just faint enough that it is completely obscured by city lights. However, out in the country, it is absolutely the center of attention. The Milky Way is the key to understanding something really, really important about our view of the sky. To find out what that is, let's take a trip. The moon, the sun, and the planets are all fairly close, relatively speaking. So close, in fact, that at the speed of light, it would only take a few hours to get around the solar system. When we look up into the sky, they are very much in the foreground of the nighttime vista. It's as if they're right up in our faces. The stars we see at night are relatively close and range from a few dozen light years away up to several hundred. But when we fly out past them, we can see what that big stretch of light known as the Milky Way really is. It's our galaxy. It's made of stars just like the ones we see in our sky, but it's a huge group of them numbering into the hundreds of billions. Most of these stars are so far away from Earth that their light just blends together into a milky glow. So here's the trick. And this is the crucial point we're trying to make. When you look up at the Milky Way, remember that it is actually behind the stars you see, and by quite a distance. Sometimes when we look up, the sky feels like it's just a ceiling over our heads. But when you look up at the Milky Way, and you realize how far away it is in the background, that illusion is broken. It gives the night sky a vast depth and scope. It's a huge wide opening to endless space. And when you do finally see it this way, when you let it fill you up inside, you'll be looking up at infinity in a whole new way.
or maybe you won't. You may be one of the billions of people who just can't see the Milky Way through all the light pollution. That's a shame. But if we decide to, we can make it better. Turn off your lights whenever you don't need them. Consider using timers or motion detectors. If you must use outdoor lights, use only enough to let you see comfortably. Sky glow is caused by light escaping upward. So shop for shielded lights or add shielding to existing ones. And there's an economic side to it as well. All we're doing is wasting our hard earned money when we light the undersides of planes and birds. And the light we squander could be used in more important places. These are the questions we need to ask ourselves. How much do our outdoor lights contribute to light pollution? What about our lights at work? What about driving at night? Even if we all do our part, light pollution probably won't go away overnight. So in the meantime, consider planning your trips to make dark sky astro tourism a part of your adventures. To our benefit, Utah has the highest concentration of certified dark sky places in the world. Our outdoor parks and monuments are wonderful places to see the stars at their best. If people will cross continents just to get a glimpse of the Grand Canyon, isn't the Milky Way worth it as well? And if, over time, we can successfully reduce or eliminate our light pollution, you won't need to pile into the family truck and drive for hours just for a glimpse of the Milky Way. All you'll need to do is go sit out in the backyard. And that's a dream worth working towards. To learn more about how to enjoy the dark sky and about other ways you can help, please visit the International Dark Sky Associations and darksky.org.